Bro. Yeah, man. Propaganda. Legendary uh, hip hop artist. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> oh. So I definitely have to start off by saying, uh, especially for all the people listening now, um, I remember being a kid and seeing you in Miami with Tunnel Rats. Yeah, man. Performing at Bayfront Park uh, yeah. Amphitheater. That's huge. Yeah. It was a boss move, right? Still is a boss move. Like Kanye just did his Jesus is King there. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. He did. He did. <laughs> and um, they were presenting you. You had short yeah. hair. Your, your, your hair wasn't long yet. Yeah. And you, uh, they're like, and one of the newest members to the Tunnel Rise propaganda. And then from there, I just seen you just blow up into who you are now. Man. Uh, and it's just crazy going from a little kid that's just a fan of Christian hip hop. Yeah. To growing up and now I'm an artist, which is, yeah. Like, never thought that would happen. Uh, and we went on tour together. We my did. Tour. We did. Um, I'm really excited about this conversation that we're about to dive in. And you're, you're someone that has always been something that um, has been very inspirational to me, the way you carry yourself, uh, the way you speak, um, what you stand for, um, all these elements that make you have motivated me more to be, to be better. Wow. I'm not saying that just for camera or anything like that. Like, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. That. No, we've... We've talked off. We talked offline. Like I, yeah. For me, I'm not naive enough to think that like we're not we're not we're not promoting a record right now. Like I know that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So I'm not. But you can't. For me, it's like if I don't have a off camera relationship with somebody, like I'm not gonna do this. You know what I'm saying? Because then I'm gonna manufacture anything. I'd be saying that's not true. You feel me? So I'm like, so for you to start off like this, like is confirmation as to like that's why i would say yes to something like this because it's like i actually i know you genuinely like sure. value me as a person and i know i i know i value you you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's like i know that that it's it's genuine you know what i mean and it's funny you bring up that like miami show that was my first time out of state rapping you know no yeah it was the first time my first like i was just an underground just oh, you never told me this rapper. Yeah, that was my first. first time South, so first time out of state, and then it was in South Florida. That trip, that trip, we did. We started in. Yeah. We did. We did. We left Cali. We did Phoenix. Then we did Tulsa, and then we went to Miami. That was my first tour. You know, That's like fine. yeah. So uh, that was crazy. Yeah. So it was like I just joined the group. We had just finished the record for my my own yeah. solo record. We were hitting yeah. the road. You know, and. I was like, yeah, my first time out of Cali and just like South Florida, I was just like, this is, what is, what is this place? What, what, I was like, I've never seen so many beautiful humans in one, it's like, why are all of you gorgeous? Like, I just, I, I what's happening right now? Yeah, I was like, I'm never, I'm never leaving. I'm like, I'm a Christian rapper. But I'm gonna lose it all right now because oh my god, all of you are beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> no, it'd be like that. Yeah, um, bro, I want to ask you. Uh, we both have hip hop backgrounds. Yeah, and we both have Christian hip hop backgrounds. Well, yeah. I'm in Christian hip hop. Um, my question to you, starting off, we're going, we're diving in right now. Why not? Going to, um. My album's called Heathen. Yes, um, which is great, mind you. Let me let me pause that and be like, perfect. Okay, okay. now go on. Um, the word is really bold. The yeah. word is uh, very complex. Um, and at times, for a lot of people, it might be a little bit scary. Well, I'm talking Christian context right now. Yeah, uh, it's very scary at times. And I just wanted to know. You growing up, uh, whether, I, I don't even know your history. Like, did you grow up in church or did you come to know Jesus? We, uh, my family, like my father's from the South. So like, you know, they was Southern Baptist preachers, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. But we didn't, as a family, become 
like practicing Christians until I was in elementary school at some point, you know, okay. and, um, I think I didn't have like a big transition moment. I sort of like kind of a leisurely casual walk into the faith, right? At about somewhere in like middle school, you know? Okay. So yeah. Did you ever hear the word heathen growing up? Oh yeah, but they did it as like, it was like almost in a in a playful way. So it was like, okay. you know, man, you running in this house acting like a little heathen, you know what I'm saying? like. You were yeah. talking too loud or, yeah. you know, knocking over some quit acting like a heathen, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so it yeah. was more in a way that, like, our parents were basically telling us to calm down, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. until college that I learned uh, that there is a biblical history in the term and then uh, and who they was talking about, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, dang, that's what y'all meant, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I remember, like, times you miss church on a Sunday and they'd be like, ah, you heathen. And you laugh about it. Right. Yeah. 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 There was, there definitely was that playfulness side of it. Yeah. Uh, that Christian culture has created. Yeah. And I also felt like on Christian culture, there was like that, like really kind of disrespectful way, you know? Yeah. You know, there's definitely like the, the, it's like, even under the playfulness is, is a slight elitism, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like us versus them sort of, you're outside yeah. the fence, I'm inside the fence, and you're, it's like a, like, I dated a, a young lady, uh, you know, a long time ago, obviously, it's like way before I got married, right, right, right. who's, her mom would say things like, about me, like, that boy acts like a commoner, you know what I'm saying, like, she was, so she was, they were from, like, Central America, so, like, yeah. that was, like, you know, the phrase, to say, that was, like, the worst thing they could say, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you're a commoner, you know what I'm saying? Like a yeah. peasant, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And it was supposed to like snatch me into place. Like, you're not, you look, well, don't act like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, right. I mean, I am a commoner. Like, what do you, I'm not, I'm not royalty, you know? I don't, I'm not a blue, I am a commoner. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's just like such a, and, and the reality is like, dude, so are you. What are you, what are you talking about, you know? But right. it definitely, like, I think the term heathen definitely has that sort of, like, elitism air to it that we would say playfully. For sure. I got to do my nerding out moment uh, creating this album. And so, literally, I'm creating the album, and I'm going backtrack. I'm just thinking about my childhood growing up. I'm talking about stories just like this to my friends in the yeah, studio yeah, yeah. sessions, right? And the word really popped out because I was like, yo, What's this word even mean then? So then I go into Google, I'm like, what's Google say it is? And yeah. it's like someone held not to a widely held religion, right? Yeah. And then I go, well, what's the Bible say about it? And I'm like, oh, it's only in King James Version. What, yeah. it's not in nothing else? Yeah. No, decided to put it in, okay. Uh, that's a clue or something, I don't know, but everything else says Gentiles and replacement of heathen. I got to do my nerding out. And I've been sharing that consistently over and over with a lot of interviews and this uh, Zoom meetings and stuff like that. And what I'm thinking through is uh, today, culturally, we have designed heathen to be something else, right? Uh, than what it originally stemmed from. And I'm just curious, what is heathen to you now in your 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 day to day life now, like? What's your idea of it or? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, it's interesting. Like, you know, in my own sort of like travels of like understanding the term, you know, throughout, throughout my time. Um, right. It's, I mean, it's, it's a term from my past. Like it's not even a word I use, mm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like after like, I, 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 last time I heard it was when you called your album it, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I don't, oh. I don't use the term anymore. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think it's because of probably some of the stuff you discovered to where it's like, like I said, it's, there's a, there's an air of elitism to it. So like, Ooh. I know who you're referring to. And most of the time it's like to use like Game of Thrones, like these are the free folk, the North of the wall. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all don't have yeah. the guy. So, so ultimately like, I mean, I don't know how else to cut it. Like it's a white term, you know what I mean? And it was a white term to use towards other white people. 
know what I'm yeah. saying? Like they was talking about their own, like, you know what I'm saying? The Druids, those were the heathens. You know what I'm saying? You know, and so since it's since it's still a European term, I'm like, well, you wasn't talking to me anyway. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. <laughs> so so <laughs> I don't need to you weren't talking to me, you know what I'm saying? And if you go use it towards me, now nah, I know what you I know what you mean. You right. know what I'm saying? That's like it's a respectability term. It's like so so in some senses, I'm like, well, if I don't prescribe to your game, mm. right, you're weaponizing a concept that Christ has undone in a lot of ways, in the sense of saying, like, you know, I mean, there is what is what is a Gentile? Like, what is yeah. that? You know what I'm saying? Like, have we not yeah. all been grafted in? You know what I'm saying? Do I not serve the same Jesus you serve? Right? So, like, right. I don't even understand. This is a, yeah, yeah. a, yeah. It's a you know, it's a non-starter. So, so in that sense, it's just like, I don't, if I'm going to use the term, I'm using it in a way of hearkening back to, like, my elders. You know what I'm saying? And, like, like my mom used to say, like, banshee or something like that. He's screaming like a little banshee, you know what I'm saying? So just like I'm, I'm referring to something that was a moment of a romanticized history, but it's nothing I would ever, ever yeah. weaponize towards another person because I don't believe okay. there is a them, you know? Like, I just mm -hmm. don't, there is no them. Like, that's not the kingdom. That's not how Christ yeah. works. There's no them. It's only us. Okay. Yeah. I remember um, talking to one of my friends that has no idea who Jesus is, right? And I'm like, bro, what's, what's heathen mean to you? Like, I'm doing this album. He's like, oh, yeah, I heard your album's called Heathen. It's fire, bro. What is that? Is it like a paradise it's a island somewhere? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. meeting? <laughs> and I was like, Yo, we, for the most part, Christians are stuck such in a bubble where Don't the you. outside world doesn't even know what we're talking about sometimes. The Christianese words that we use, you know? Yeah. Um, there are people that know what heathen means because they hear it on like TV shows or something like that. You heathen the same way we playfully use it. Yeah. Uh, but some of them don't even know like dissecting what it is. Yeah. And what I've come to realize is this, uh, and I've felt it, uh, announcing my album. It wasn't even before creating my album. It was when I announced my album. I started feeling it with a lot of Christians. Not all. My fans are amazing, but there's a good loud 5% that they're really loud, um, that they voice their opinion really quick and be like, how could you name it heathen? Are you saying we're all sinners? Are you championing this word? And uh, there's like a a fight happening. Like everything's like, let's get biblical. Let's get, let's yeah, talk about it. They've biblical. never heard. And I'm like, <laughs> yo, I'm trying to do art. And why are you guys trying to get too deep into this right now? Not only that, bro, I'm like, you haven't heard the album. Exactly. So how do so, you know? Here's what I'm trying to get across with this point right here is you and I, we've lived in Christian hip hop space uh, for years now. And I want to know what is it about Christian hip hop that makes us um, as a whole genre really feel like everything has to be really deep theology. And, it, and we have to explain every single thing so deep, yeah. precise, because uh, if it's not deep and precise, yeah. then you're a heathen. Oh, no, he's worldly now. He's doing secular music now. And up, oh, you know? Yeah. What's funny is something that you and I also share is that we've spent just as much time outside of Christian hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And like mm -hmm. general market stuff who, yep. in my experience, is probably like yours in the sense that no one ever had any doubts about my faith. Straight up. Outside of like when you are among actual heathens, if you will, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yes. They never had a question about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it was always inside that somebody was like, something about how you're carrying yourself or the, or not actually not even how I'm carrying myself, but the words that I'm using. That's like, it's like we're not, if you don't speak this language, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, here's, here's, I'm gonna try to make my answer as succinct as possible. I think. Hip, Christian hip hop is 
is not autonomous. It's not a it's not an island within its own. It's a part of culture, Christian culture, which is also a part of Earth culture. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's not unique in the sense of its problems. It's 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 specific in the in that like you know the because it's we're still talking about Christian hip hop, but it's not unique. I don't think. I think it's a reflection of the problems we all have, which is we're all just looking for something that's safe. And what is safe is familiar, right? So if what you're saying is not familiar, then I don't think you're safe, right? Um, and what is also dangerous is exploration. Like, no one wants to, you don't want to step out just in case. Yeah. It's not what it is. So I think that that's one thing. But I think now to get more specific, we can only be a product of who came before us. You know what I'm saying? So I think that like mm-hmm. in a lot of ways we are, let's, let's, let's be real in the sense that you and I are like third and fourth generation Christian hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and you know, and dudes like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, RG and them, that's like fifth and sixth generation. You know what I'm saying? So we can own, we're a product of who came before us. And who came before us were also just men and women, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Who had their own sort of strengths and weaknesses and and pride issues and, you know, closed mindedness. And I think in a lot of ways, because there are forefathers, we saw that it just, this is how it is. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, well, no, that was their hang ups. Mm-hmm. And we just inherited some of the some of the problems that they had, and one of those problems was no one taught them how to yeah. understand a diversity of thought. You know what I'm saying? Because they yeah. had no models. You you feel right. me? So I difference between one of the difference between you and me is like we're from opposite sides of the country. I come from a place where in LA, every Christian rapper I knew was also battle rappers. We were all Mm -hmm. from hip hop as a whole. So we were all very aggressive and pissy, you know what I'm saying? And and edgy, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, but it's like, but it was, but it was great. This was, this was just hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Um, And there was no, churches weren't opening their doors for us. Like there was no pastors for us, you know what I'm saying? Whereas on the East, you have dudes like the cross movement guys who were like, they're looking across the table from like five percenters and like Wu Tang dudes who were so like, yeah, man, you know, spark it, you know what I'm saying? And you had to like be so precise and and yeah. and rigid with your like theology, and because you, you was like you was ciphering, you was you know part of. So they were so like, yo, you have to be clear about, you know what I'm saying? So they were just products of their environment. Yeah, ain't no internet. So nobody knows that these two things are happening on other sides of the country. You know what I'm saying? You run into each other and it's like, why are you doing things like that? That's not how you're supposed to do it. You know? And they're going, yeah, why are you doing it? You know what I'm saying? And we just happen to be children of that. You know what I'm saying? Which were all inside of churches who built all these denominations, who all did the same thing. Like, why are you offering communion like that? Why y'all singing these? You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, we're all just products of our parents. You know what I'm saying? And it just took us, people like you, people like me, people like those that are willing to like challenge those status quo and go, hey, wait a minute. Like, I don't like, that's just, just cause your mama, just cause your mama, you know what I'm saying? says you have to wash every dish turn to the left and like this you know what i'm saying <laughs> and you can't you know what i'm saying you can't put the you can you can leave the beans and rice on the you know what i'm saying you like you know i understand y'all be leaving the beans all on the stove all night like that's okay you know what i'm saying like my oh, wife do it all the time i get so frustrated i'm like can you put the beans in the refrigerator can you put them in the refrigerator you know what i'm saying like this just we just products of our parents you know what i'm saying so i just right. i think in a lot of ways that's what's going on with christian music it's just we're products of that, but we're products of the same problem that the rest of the church has. And you, you made me open my eyes on something with that too, where I'm seeing uh, hip hop for the longest is not safe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what happens is once it got introduced into Christian culture, it, I, I'm guessing what the, the ripple effect is, make sure you prove Prove your city. Christian America 
that you are safe and you are good. This is yeah. not dangerous. Yeah. Um, there has been a consistency. Let's fast forward to who we are now. Yeah. I think we're still trying to prove to Christian culture, hey, this is safe. It's, it's, not, it's not bad, yeah. right? In Christian hip hop, I feel like there's been a fight to be like, hey, can I sit at the table too? Yeah. Can, I, can, can you allow me to be in here? Oh, this is what I have to do. Let me do some formula stuff, Christian radio stuff. Okay, let me, this is how I'm accepted into this mm-hmm. culture. Got it. And I feel like, like it's, I mean, that's one, it's not, I mean, nothing about the gospel is safe. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? right. Um, and as far as I know, for me as a musician, that, I mean, that stuff was soul crushing, number one. And number two, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to be super real, it kind of hurt my witness. You know what I'm saying? To like, for people again, like you and me who have this like space outside of the Christian yeah. bubble. Yeah. You know, those brothers and sisters were looking at me like, yo, what are you, what are you doing, man? Like, oh, man. man, this stuff, like, yo, when you was talking like this, like that's the type of stuff that I was like sitting at home going, dang, man, like, and this fool might be on to something. You know what I'm saying? He ain't doing this stuff. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what this is. You know what I mean? Bro, I felt the same. So I said this in my last interview where when I created my album, We Belong, I loved it. Great album. Great not watching it. But my boys growing up, they're like, man, that's cool, G. But I, I, don't, know about, I don't know about this EDM stuff. And yeah, that's really clean music. That's dope, man. Like, Cool. And they weren't really rocking with it. Yeah, they were like, I'm happy for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I realized I was like, man, I was trying to make people happy in Christian world industry. I was trying to make people happy in Christian radio yeah. to make sure I'm making something safe. Yeah. Even though I still stand firm with the music that I was doing, like I love it. Yes. Yeah. Part, but I realized I wasn't making what I felt was honest to me. Yeah. Right. And it's it's the battle of growing. Right. Yeah, totally. We all go through a journey. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot that, you know, I'm learning. I, I don't have all the answers yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I don't want to make it seem like I'm the Malcolm X for Christian hip hop right now. And yeah. I'm going to change the whole industry. Uh, but um, I do feel that this is a crucial time because this new generation is like, yo, we got Google and mm-hmm. church culture looks so different, now, especially with, with quarantine. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, you can't even go to a church building anymore now. You have to do yeah. it through streaming. Like everything is shifting. Yeah. And one, that's exciting. Two, that's a little bit scary because it's like, this will go really far left. Yeah. Right. But it allows a lot of opportunity. And what I wanted to do with this album is start the conversation, mm-hmm. like how a lot of people have started the conversation many times before. I yeah. wanted to join into it. Uh, I'm not pioneering anything. I don't want to make it seem like I'm the first to ever say this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. You, Cray, have opened up so many doors for all of us. Uh, likewise, how many people have opened up doors for you guys. Yeah. Right? So uh, I just want to know, like, where do you think we're going right now? Yeah, man, that's great, bro. That's like kind of into the stuff that I'm personally writing, you know what I'm saying? But like, in a lot of ways, I think one, one you kind of hit it on the head in the sense that I remember maybe five, six years back, the whole, all of like the sort of, kind of like reformed, the reformed and, and just sort of, evangelical like blogosphere was all in a huff over multi-site churches over having pastors on a screen and like can you really do that is that actually biblical and it's so comical now because it's our only (laughs) option you know what i'm saying but that was they was writing blogs all it was blogs everywhere like is this biblical is is, you know what i'm saying is can you really pastor from a screen i'm like well i mean uh Y'all sound silly now, you know what I'm saying? So right. I, what I hope, I, what I feel like the church should be or I think is going through and has many times throughout history is 
learning to sort of hold our stances with the open hand, like hold your, don't hold your theology like this, hold it like this. You know what mm. I'm saying? Cause you just you honestly like you have no idea where you're going to stand five years from now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and this is a chance for us to get that redo is to say, you know what I'm saying? Is to not, could not look back like, well, what, I just want to get back to how it was. Cause maybe how it was wasn't that good. You know what I'm saying? Maybe mm. now it's a chance to be like, we have a chance to redo, to terraform, to start over, to like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, okay, what do we want to bring from our past? What do we want to leave in our past? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And go, yeah. uh, another thing, I'm saying this as a parent, like the idea of like, mm. we used to really limit our kids' screen time. It's so silly now, because that's like, the only time my kids have with their friends is on a screen. Right. The only time she can talk to her teacher or my little preschool teacher is on a screen. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, right. again, I'm even learning to hold the things I practically held. Like, man, you just got to hold them looser. So then going into the future, yeah. just being like, man, maybe we were not. Here's your chance to realize you weren't making the main thing the main thing. You know what I'm saying? Where, yeah. el where else? Now, while we're at home, where else are we not making the main thing the main thing? With music. Yeah you know, uh, 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 festivals, uh, like you said, safety, all that stuff. Like where have we yeah. been like, where are you? I used to always say this, like, what are you going to laugh at? What is the church going to laugh at us about a hundred years from now? Right? Like, what, what are we going to go? <laughs> can you believe? Like, cause I mean, how many times have you been like, dude, can you believe? like, like churches yeah. had slaves? Like, and we go, can you believe they actually like, there was a time that we believed that you couldn't marry interracially. Like, can you actually believe, you know what I'm saying? So what is it that we're holding on to right now that a hundred yeah. years from now, people are gonna giggle at us about, you know what I'm saying? But we were I love that you're saying this. Convinced. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So to me, yeah. it's like, what you're saying with your music is like, and I wanna encourage you in this, cause I feel like this is what I've learned in, in my time is that, mm -hmm the music will do the work. Like, I don't have to per se feel, which you're not saying you do, but like feel the weight of, I want to change the culture, Christian and otherwise. And I feel mm -hmm. the weight of, and it's my job to move culture forward because what yeah. I've learned is like, your character and your music will do that work, right? Yeah. And it does it, you know what I'm saying? And you just vehemently, which I'm proud of you for stepping into, just like vigorously and vehemently have a commitment to being yourself and being mm. who God has made you. Like that's where your commitment stays. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the change happens because you just keep putting stuff into the ethos. You, you made we belong. So it's like, it's made. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, it's doing the work that you, yeah. you can't go everywhere that album is. You yeah. made Heathen. It's there. Why do, why do, it's, I, oh, it's there. I can't, you know what I'm saying? It's already out. You know what I'm saying? So like once it's right. out, it's going to do the work that you're, you're, you're hoping to see. You, 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 you do that change by just making the music. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it takes its own life. So in my mind, I'm like, the more albums like Heathen, the more, you know, to self grandulize you know what I'm saying? The more albums like Crooked, the more mm -hmm. propagandas yeah. in the world, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. The more Gavis, that the more that this happens, culture begins to shape shape because we're making it. Like we are the culture. Culture's not- For sure. This, you know, monster that lives in the mountains, you know what I'm saying? It comes, steals our kids. Like, no, we're yeah. it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So where, where culture's going is where we're going. You feel yeah. me? And, yeah. and I feel like your example of we're going in a good direction. Yeah. My, uh, one of my last questions is, um, and I really want you to dive into this one. <laughs> like I have it. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm giving long answers because I'm the no, wrong I love person. this. I love this. <laughs> I love hearing you just speak, man, because I'm always learning with you. And I'm trying to soak in this moment. Um, I get asked this a lot. Mm -hmm. um, 
usually comes from a side of someone that's uh it feels like a hater <laughs> yeah it never feels like an understanding like mm-hmm. hey i'm curious why are you yeah. and this question i'm about to ask you um yeah i'm just i, I i'm just gonna let you expand on it i usually get questioned this why do you always talk about culture just let jesus be the message and that's it mm-hmm. jesus is enough um I strongly believe, yes, Jesus is enough. Like for thousands of years, he doesn't need us uh, to do anything. That the word of God is very strong, right? But then reality hits me and I'm like, wait, culture is a reality, right? Uh, There is no Bible without culture, right? Um, And... I want to know why is it so important for us to expand on culture, Christian culture, Christian music industry culture? Like, why is there layers of needing to talk about it? Yeah. Why is there layers of needing to explain certain things? That's good. Yeah. Um, well, let me let me back up a bit because I think oftentimes with someone like yourself or other sort of artists or thinkers who have thought about these things much longer than a person, not, not in an elitist way, but in a way that like their life just doesn't call for them to think about these things. You know what I'm saying? Um, is one. So I say that to say that's a lot of times where this is coming from. They just haven't thought about the things that we think about, you know? Um, and one of that is, what culture even means that's what i found is most people don't know what it means again Mm -hmm. they think culture is something else and again that's a product of we're a product of like zuzu street revivals and the culture warriors and the chuck colson's of the world that felt like in a lot of ways i hate to say it but from a very racist position of like Mm. Our way of life is being taken from us through desegregation, through, you know, black and brown rights, through immigration, through all these things, our way. So they were like, our way of life is being taken. So we need to be at war with the culture because the culture is saying the culture is the problem. It's this Mm. idea that the culture is something separate from us. Mm. Right. Um, And it's just not one it's not academically true it's not practically true nor is it biblical right Mm -hmm. uh because again if you have two humans trying to figure out how to exist that's culture like it's just language culture you know what i'm saying (laughs) family ties culture like all of it it is we are culture is us right so for someone to say Jesus didn't do this one. Well, like that's that's all Jesus did. It's the, mm-hmm. the the whole experience was in a Roman occupation, right? How do I how do I relate to my family? How do I relate to the stranger? How do I relate to the poor? How do I relate to the government? That's I, you telling me that's not tell me that's not culture, right? That, that is the definition of it, right? So, so if culture is something that we made right now as an academic, I'm going to jump in here and say like, how it works is like, so we make it up. Like, again, we, we made up culture. Like we just said, we should make it up. Like, these are the ways that we survive. And then at this, at some point it starts making us right. And well, what do I mean by that? Like, well, what's your What's your mom's sister to you? Well, that's your tia. Why? What does she have to do with you at all? Like yeah. nothing. She really has nothing to do with you, right? But I can't imagine. I can't imagine. What do you mean she has nothing to do with? That's my aunt. It's because I am now. Culture has now made me. I don't. I can't think of her as anything else, but my tia, because that's what she is. Well, yeah. no, she's not. We made it up, 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So at some point it makes us smartphones. We made we made these things up, but like I can't memorize a phone number anymore. Can you? Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Why? Because it made us. You understand what I'm right. saying? So it's 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 important that we understand that if we are making culture, and then culture is turning around and making us, then we need to make it awesome because it's gonna make us. We need to invest in you. You're investing in us. You right. know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's who we are. Like, why do I talk about culture? Well, do you want to see your neighbor loved? Yeah. I need to talk about culture. You know what I'm saying? You want to see some laws being fair and just? Yes. Talk about culture. You yes. understand what I'm saying? You want to see the yes. poor? You, it's, in, in, in a lot of ways, my, my homegirl Nish, she uses this phrase, institutional neighborliness, right? Mm. The best way to love your neighbor as an institution is to affect culture. It's to vote for that person is to mm. present ways that all of us can live better. Yeah. That is an institutionalized way to love your neighbor. What you're doing as an artist is loving neighbors way to the ends of the world. Neighbors you'll never be able to shake hands with. And that was the point of the Good Samaritan. That neighbor, right. that who is your neighbor? That dude. Dude mm. you never met dude from another race, another ethnicity, another culture that you've seen beneath you. It's the point of the yeah. story. It's, it's, yeah. That's your neighbor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the guy that like, that you hate is the one that you need to follow. There's the, that's the guy you need to act like. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So you know, at, at the end of the day, I think it, a lot of times I think it comes from someone honestly having a bad definition of culture Right. Mm -hmm. And then um, our role is to gently correct that. And I think you correct that by making amazing art. Yeah. I'm trying to make amazing art, bro. Bro, um, don't, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. I'm trying. I, I feel like if you're not being. I just feel like if you're not being questioned, you know, like, what do you what do you I'm just like. Like, what are you doing if you're not being questioned? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is this, mayonnaise? What is this? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just... Why are we not questioning that Jesus is white in all these pictures? Why are we not questioning... You know what? It is a world of people that are. You feel me? <laughs> right? You know, there's, like, all these art pieces that are fire. I think, like, the, the Last Supper picture is a fire piece, but that's not accurate at all. You know? No. No, uh, not at all. You know? <laughs> It's so I'm just piece. like so then so the that's the question. Well, that's right. So it's like question by who, man? Like like who's asking those questions? You feel me? Like who's mm -hmm. not comfortable with your art? Like consider that. Like what? Which okay? So if I'm sitting down with these people and I'm like, okay, so this person who's uncomfortable with my art also thinks A, B, and C, and I'm like, I you, of course you're uncomfortable with my work. You know what I'm right. saying? And this person that I'm like, wow, I understand your experience. I understand where you're coming from. Maybe we not, they're not necessarily, you know, I'm not saying they're necessarily the same ethnicity as me, but they, there's a shared experience that I'm like, dog, I resonate with that. Like, I understand, I understand, you know, what I, I see why I resonate with you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, okay. Yeah. I just feel like some people, some people are supposed to be mad at you. You know what I'm saying? For sure, for yeah. sure. I guess, um, so I've been through this journey of fighting to be confident in myself and I feel super confident now, right? Yeah. I think with this album, I'm like, yeah, let's go. I'm gonna do what I want to do with balance of healthiness, of right? Of course, <laughs> you're being, yeah. But then I still, I've realized in the creation of this uh, album, I'm not at peace though, uh, mm. and I uh, and I hate saying that because I'm so confident in all this confusion, uh, but it still irks me when I read certain comments. It still irks me where I feel like I have to keep on explaining and explaining over and over. I feel like a record just going over and over again, and I feel like you've gotten that peace. Yeah, uh, I could be wrong, but. When I speak to you, man, there is a peace. I'll never forget this one time, and I, I've never said this to you. Uh-oh. I'll never forget this one time. Uh, 
we're, on, we're inside the tour bus. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, this is uh, when I just came out with We Belong. Yeah. And you see my hair slick back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, put a lot of product in it. Yeah. And you looked at me and you're like, gee, your hair is beautiful, man. Mm. Like, why don't you just let it be curly? And I was like, nah, I just like the style. He's like, okay, cool. Do a curly one these days, man. It looks fire. Like yeah. your natural hair curls. And I stopped, bro. Wow. And something so small like that really spoke to me so loud because I was like, yo, who am I right now? Am I trying to just wear the Chelsea boots wow. and look all Hillsong-y? Yeah. Nothing wrong with Hillsong. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But of course. There's, there's a cool look that they had at that time, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's cool. I don't, I'm, I got to phrase this correct because I think it's okay to be inspired by a style. Absolutely. Right? I think it's okay to, but there was a norm going on mm -hmm. that was a huge impact that everyone in CCM kind of looked the same, right? Yeah. There was a consistency. And I was like, am I trying to fit in even with my own identity? Yeah. Right. And then I went through my rebellious stage. I'm like, bump that, cut off all the hair, right? You know what I'm saying? I did my curls at one point for Panorama. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right? And I'm, I'm growing and then music is changing too. And I still feel like I still haven't found that peace in me mm. where I'm still trying to prove myself. Yeah. And I'm like, where did you find that peace, bro? Wow, man. Well, I'll say this. I remember that moment um, on the bus. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's, it's interesting because that moment came from my own search, right? Being able to be free enough to look at you and be like, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Some of that had to do with me struggling being, you know, African-American and being like, my hair doesn't do that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And I wish it did, you know? Um, and then just being like, and this fool don't even know what he got. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and coming from, I grew up in a Latino neighborhood and being like, yo, this fool caramely and beautiful and with the pretty curly hair. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like I was jealous of dudes like you, you feel me growing up. Um, mm -hmm. but I will say this. I think that at the end of the day, for me, there are times, there are things that still get under my skin. Um, when I feel like I'm not being treated charitable or understood or that like my intentions are being judged. Like, I don't mind somebody being like, I don't vibe with this. Oh, cool. I get it. You know what I'm saying? But when someone judges my intention, it definitely, it hurts. But I think the piece for me going back to all the stuff you brought up is the fact that like it in trying to belong, I just got to a point to where I realized it's never going to work. Like, mm. I'm never going to look like them. You understand what I'm saying? I'm never, and, I, and it's exhausting trying to, whoever them is, right? I was like, I'm exhausted, and it's not going to work, right? Yeah. And it's just like, so, so once you start realizing that, like, the finish line is impossible, yeah. and even if I get to it, am I going to really like it when I'm there, right? So this is started what I started, what started welling up in me and being like, well, what do I have? Right? Yeah. Well, I have this, I have this, I have this. And this is something that no one else has. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I was yeah. like, well, why don't I lean into, well, that's stupid. This is, you, it's been here all along. Like it's been sitting in front of, I've always had me, you know? Yeah. And just being like, wherever I am, I'm always there. I know it sounds corny, but it's just like, I have to live with me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Everybody else goes home to their own house. Everybody else goes home to their own problems, their own struggles, their own right. insecurities. And most of the time, I found people are speaking from that. They're speaking from their own insecurities. They see mm -hmm. something that would make them uncomfortable to do, right? So yeah. they need you to jump in line because you make them feel unsafe, which is their problem. So once I started understanding that, one about myself, mm -hmm. right, that 
for a long time, I did it to other people where I was just like, nah, fool, that's not real hip hop. That's not, you understand what I'm saying? It's just because like that made, because it made me uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? To, this is not true of you, but like if, if one of my friends, like you were to do EDM, I would be like, oh, this fool sold out. And it's like, that's because it made me uncomfortable. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not, yeah. it's not you, it's me. So yeah. once you do that sort of soul work to realize, damn, the problem's actually inside of me, I have to, and I, and I know how long it took me to do that. Mm-hmm. You're just gracious to another person to be like, oh, you ain't done the work yet. You don't, you wow. don't know that's your problem. Wow. You feel me? So once that mm-hmm. happens, I'm like, I knew it was no amount of words anyone could have told me that would make me change my mind. So because of that, I don't feel the need to continually re-explain myself. That's what I was trying to say earlier, where I'm like, the music does the work, right? So when you put out the music, someone's going to revisit this album five, six years from now. Yeah. Be like, dang, Gabi was on it. He was trying to tell me this. Oh my God, he was trying to tell us this. I, I can't believe, when I don't, I, I'm not a chart topper. Now, I mean, I billboard. I, y'all hit billboard here and there. Come on, yes. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, got some, I got some number ones here and there. But like, Come on. I'm the type of artist that somebody goes three years later and they're like, dang, prop. I can't believe you were saying that three years ago. You know what I'm saying? So that's the type of artist I am. So for me, yeah. I have accepted that it's like, okay, cool. Let me just... You can be in my comments right now. I'll just wait. You know what I'm saying? And right. let let a person process their own. So for me, the piece is in that. The piece is in all that to say. I'm, I'm I guess I'm finding the answer. The piece is in. I've done my own soul care. I've done my own work. Right. Good. This has got nothing to do with the music. This is Jason, not propaganda. This is Jason. Yeah. You understand yeah, yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. for Gavi, you know what I'm saying? It's like I'm not talking to Gavi. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, Gabriel. I'm talking to Gabriel. When Gabriel does the work, you yeah. feel me? To be like, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Everything about me is beautiful. All that God intended for me, all that the right. Father made me is perfect in his sight. God saw it and it was good. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? I feel like we always skip to when the fall, but we forget how long God looked at all the creation and was like, it's good. It's good. Mm. It's mm. good. You understand what I'm saying? Let's, let's remember that. God saw it. He said it was good. You know? So yeah. for me, when you lean into that, it's like, Ooh. now I'm free to just be like, yeah, sometimes I make bad stuff and I'm willing to, I can hear that. I can hear it. I can hear when someone gives me bad critiques. I can hear it. You know what I'm saying? Because I know that I'm good. Right? Yeah. So because of that, if I'm speaking from that people that know me, people that love me, people that have the right to pick up the phone and be like, yo, what what are you doing fool like if they're happy with me you feel me then i'm like i know i'm coming from that and i just don't need i just don't need to explain it to everyone like i just i don't the music will do the work i know what i said in these songs yeah i know what i said in this quote unquote interview i know what i said in this podcast i know what i said i think about what i say you yeah. understand what i'm saying yeah. so if you're gonna weaponize my words, all I gotta do is just play the tape again and just be like, well, it's right here. This is what I said, not with mm-hmm. this. Here's the yeah. album. You can, that's what I said. I don't understand, you understand what I'm saying? Like this, not, I don't understand what the confusion is. What did yeah. you mean when you said this? Well, I meant what I said. That's, that's your understand? What I'm saying? Like, I don't understand what, like, like yeah. Kanye, because it's be in Paris. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I named it that, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah, so at the end of the day, the, the piece for me is the fact that I've done the soul care to be like, for a long time, I wasn't okay with who I was. Mm. You know? And now that going through that process of reminding myself to be okay with who I am, I just yeah. don't feel the need to explain. Bro, I almost got emotional as you were talking, man. Uh, you're really good at this. <laughs> You're too good at this. Um, thank you for that. 
Yeah, man. Don, dude, everything about you, bro. Like, y'all better not edit this part out. I believe this. Like, everything about you and the timing as to, like, why you now? You know what I'm saying? Um, mm. I didn't understand Miami and the music that came out of Miami until mm. I got there. You know what I'm saying? It's just like it's just like gangster rap. It's just like L.A. music. Like, you don't get it until you're here. You know what For I'm sure. saying? For and, sure. And then once you're here, you're like, all of this makes sense now. Yes. See the brilliance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So all that you are, you know what I'm saying, with your style, your aesthetic, the music you choose, the, the musical decisions you make, the, the tracks you pick, the people you work with, it's like your the the Spanish, you know what I'm saying? Like all of it is like it's so right for now, you know what I'm saying? And you would be doing a such a disservice mm. if you didn't wear all that out loud like we need all of that right now like just look yeah. around bro like we need yeah this all that you, we need this you know what i'm saying yeah. yeah yeah bro thank you so much man my pleasure doc i really appreciate you bro i don't want to take up too much more of your time good yeah, man um i think what we i think we got what we needed with this conversation i yeah, think man. People are gonna left very inspired and you know a lot of soul searching. I hope so, man. I hope I'm so. about to be doing a lot of soul searching too, uh, more than what I've been doing. So I really appreciate you, bro. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate you, bro.